There's nobody like our God, nobody like our God. Into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you.
believe that you serve a mighty God. I don't know what you came into the sanctuary with this morning. I don't know what baggage you brought into this house of worship, but whatever's going on, I just want you to know that mighty are the works of God's hands. He has the power to fix any problem. He's a great God. He knows no limits. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. For he is a wonderful, wonderful Lord. I'm not the only one. Someone in here knows the God that I'm talking about. Somebody knows for yourself that God can pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on a solid rock. Our call to worship is an oldie but goodie. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Our Father and our God, we say that you are good. And that your mercy even extends to us. We don't stand in the worship service on our own strength or on our own merit. But Lord, we're here because you have redeemed us. You have bought us with the price. And because you have bought us with the price, we are here to declare the goodness of your love and the perfection of your grace for us. We pray, God, that in this worship moment that you will get every worship participant out of the way and that your spirit will rule and reign in this place. Have your way in this service. Have your way with all of us. Have your way with every preacher, every singer, every person that is here under the sound of my voice. We give you thanks and we invite you into this place on this morning. Let the people of God say amen. I really love the Lord. Me 
the victory. I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. Six verses ten through seventeen. You can follow it on the screen on your way. Read the text. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will Stand, you will, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Verse 17, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Our hymn of the morning, what a fellowship, what a joy to love, leaning on the everlasting.
And the people of God say together, amen. amen. It is prayer time in the sanctuary. And we have so many things to pray for. We pray for those who have been affected by these floods. We ask God's grace and mercy upon families that have lost, in many cases, their homes, their possessions. We pray today for Reverend Calloway and his wife, Ida May, who has to be there 24-7 so that the doctors could minister to him. We pray for Deacon Vanessa Brown, her dad, Mr. Leroy, Mr. Butler is in the hospital and want to ask God's blessings upon them. So many things to pray for, and yet God can bless every prayer, every concern. We know that God's a healer. We pray today for those who will be affected by this president as once again he tries to show up his base by making a commitment that he made about immigrants. We pray for the violence that grips our nation, grips our world. Yesterday in West Philadelphia, seven individuals shot on the playground. By the grace of God, it could be our children. So we pray today in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are traveling. And the Lord has blessed them to be able to travel. We pray that God will give them travel and mercy. Today we lift up the family of Reverend Guy McGee who was faithful to God and we have this chair draped in memory of him, his faithfulness to God and to this church. So many concerns. Even though we cannot acknowledge them all, God knows them all. So I would ask this morning you'd make your way to the altar as Deaconess Jane Nolan lifts up the name of Jesus in prayer. If you can, bring a name with you, bring a concern with you. So many needs. We lift up Darlene Logan as she continually prays for her sister. If you can, just call out a name. If you can, call out a name here in the altar. Call out a name. Somebody is near and dear to you. Could be a neighbor. Could be a friend, could be a co-worker. I lift up our brother Rodney, whose brother was called home to glory this week as a result of cancer. We lift him up this morning in prayer. We all need the hand of God to bless us. As we come to the throne of grace, to look to your right and to your left of the hand of the person that you're holding. You're holding the hand of a survivor. We have all survived something, whether it be illness, bad news from the doctor, from the lawyer, family issues, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, we have all survived something. But we stand here today because we have been redeemed by the blood of God. As we come humbly to your throne of grace this morning, I just want to remind you that no matter what you are going through, God has a In 2 Corinthians, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. No eye has seen, nor ear have heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Most gracious and almighty God, giver of all, of all good and perfect gifts, we give you honor today. 
we celebrate you today. We thank you, God, for our rising up this morning because you gave us life. We're able to rise because you gave us strength. We know that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We ask you, O oh God, to enlighten what is dark in us, strengthen what is weak in us, mend what is broken, and heal what is sick in us. Revive us, O oh Lord, and take back whatever peace and love that has died in us. Let flesh be crucified so that you may be glorified, that your people may be edified, for we know that God is eternal, yeah. eternal life. We ask you to touch every person that comes seeking you, Lord. Bind the hand of the enemy. Let your anointing resonate in this place and let there be an outpouring on your people. Take us to another level, Lord. We need to be fortified with your power. We cannot make it on our own but we know that your joy is our strength. Fill us up, Lord. Someone has come burdened down with issues of life, but we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you, O oh God, for being faithful to us, even when we were not faithful to you. When we look back over the moments of our lives, we cannot help but wonder how in the world did we make it over? And yet we realize that it had not been for your grace and mercy, where, where would we be? We ask you, O oh God, to look in on the sick, the downtrodden, the forgotten, and the bereaved. God, we ask you to prick their hearts and let them know that you will never leave them or forsake them. Help us, O oh God. Give us a clean heart that we may serve you despite what we are going through. Let us not forget that we are more than conquerors through you because you love us. Bless Pastor Kwan and thank you for the anointing that you have placed on his life. Bless him, God, that his spirit will speak to him and that your words may fall on fertile ground, that someone's heart may be changed and convict to follow you. Oh God, we thank you, we love you, with grateful and humble hearts. Amen. Give God praise, give God praise. Give him praise, give him praise. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy Thank to you, be Lord. praised, give him praise.
Do we have any guests? Please stand so we can receive you this morning. We want to hear what Donna has to say. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. And so it appears that the family is here. And that no guests are here today that will keep the door open ready to welcome them. For in this house of God, all children of God are welcome. Amen. The world is going mad that I'm sure of. And most of us have gone mad and been broken at one time or another. And thank God we are all breaking at the same time. Yeah. And so when one falls down, there's somewhere near in the family to give you a hand up and take your hand and walk this part of the journey with you until you're able to walk along with you with your Savior, Jesus Christ. People, open your hearts to open your soul. And don't be afraid of being hurt. Because the hurt will only make you grow. And it will only make you walk closer to Him. Because He will not hurt you. Anything that comes from Him is good and precious. So let us turn our face to God. Let us turn our face to the Son who redeemed us and saved us. And let us hold on to the spirit that lives in us. And let us take care of each other each and every day one more time. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask Tom to turn my attention to BDT back to Man and the TikTok. Good morning, Bethlehem. My name is Janice Johnson. Welcome to BET. The Praise Dance Ministry is selling delicious water ice every Sunday after each service until September 1st. The cost is only $2 a cup and will be sold outdoors in front of the main entrance. The proceeds from the sales will be used to purchase much needed uniforms for their growing ministry. Feel free to stop by and get a nice, refreshing, cool treat. It's not too late. Don't forget to purchase your baseball tickets. Come join the Deacons Ministry for their annual Phillies baseball game on this Wednesday, July 17th at 7 p.m. Phillies versus the Dodgers. Cost, $25. Cost to ride the bus, $7 to be paid in advance. There are still seats available. See any deacon for more information and to purchase your tickets. Have you signed up for Picnic in the Park and Bingo yet? Join the BBC Senior Ministry and have a fun day at Militia Hill Park in Fort Washington on Monday, July 22nd, 2019, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for a barbecue lunch and bingo, cost is $10. Great prizes for the winners and delicious barbecue for all who attend. Transportation is available and will be leaving the church at 10.30 a.m. By the way, men, you're invited too. And now here's an important announcement from the deacons, deaconesses, and trustees. They want all members to feel that they can share life's ups and downs within this community of believers. We recognize that we have to be intentional about building that kind of community. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 tells us, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We have some great things planned to help us get to know each other. Please stay tuned for additional details about these opportunities. Together we will be BC, believe, belong, and connect in Christ. The Women's Spiritual Emphasis Ministry is sponsoring a luncheon and fashion show. It will be held on Saturday, November 2nd, 2019, 
12 noon to 4 p.m. at the North Hills Country Club in Glenside. Come and high step with women of royalty for an afternoon of fun and fellowship. There will be vendors, door prizes, and raffles to participate in. Fashions and music will be presented by L. Pay. Ticket cost is $65. Starting today, tickets will be on sale in the cafe after each worship service. Hope to see you there. Elf, where have you been? That's a mighty big sack you're carrying there. Well, Janice, you know, the Heart and Hand Ministry is having their gala luncheon and silent auction. It will be held on September the 7th to raise money for the Ogata children, and old buildings always need something. I've been busy shopping for items for the silent auction. Good job, Elf. From Molly, we have an amber and silver necklace and an onyx and silver necklace. We also have Falani earrings, which are correct. From Ghana, we have handcrafted leather boxes and kente sashes from the kente factory. We have artwork from a Bahamian artist, the Last Supper on canvas from an African artist, and the Freedom Riders from Kolonghi Productions. You'll recognize the Freedom Riders. We did not leave out the guys. We brought silver and onyx bracelets, and a few are made of brass, and they are very manly. Stop by the table. We are set up in the cafeteria area and place your bid. Winners will be announced at the luncheon. If you or your ministry would like to be an anchor for BET, contact Brenda in the church office. Have a blessed week, and remember to love God and serve people. If you or your ministry would like to be an anchor for BET, contact Brenda in the church office. Have a blessed week, and remember to love God and serve people. Now we have some flowers on the altar. I want to make sure I pronounce this name correct. Kersha Hamilton. Is she here? Oh. Your husband has placed flowers on the altar for you, child. And we, we will not look. You can give him a kiss. A holy one, though. Amen. That is wonderful. Let's see who these other flowers are for. These flowers are for Paula McCauley and for Jack who are getting married. Amen. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to come up here. You never know what's going to happen when you come to Bethlehem. And this couple does not know, they had no idea what I'm going to do in a moment. They'll tell me after service. But there's a couple here who serves in ministry, but they serve each other. And I have been blessed as I watch them as man and wife. Both of them had a period of illness, but they had never lost their love and strength for one another. And I'm going to ask the Reverend Dr. Asan Wright Riggins and Reverend Betty Wright Riggins to come and pray for this couple. They renewed their vows not too long ago. Uh, they sit together. They love each other. And we pray that God's blessings will be with you. You're getting married on this Friday. And I am ecstatic. Dear God, we are grateful. You have brought two hearts together. And you said that the two shall become one. And we can see that happening in our eyes. You have done a marvelous thing in the lives of these folks. And they are indeed committed to one another. And we 
as a church family committed to them. So be in the center of their love. As they look at one another, help them to know that the fire in their eyes is only because of the fire of your Holy Spirit. Bind them close to one another so one will not fall without the other. Keep them. You have kept them through hurt and health. We know that you will continue to wrap your arms around them. We as a church family love them and love you for giving us opportunity to love them together. It's in your name that we ask these prayers. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. Now, we have a good track record, according to Deacon Wayne Holiday. Every time we go to the Phillies game, they win. We probably should go every day. <laughs> we do have some more tickets. The game is this Wednesday evening. Uh, the deacons are working hard to make sure it's a night of fellowship, but also a night that we can help somebody else. Amen. So next Sunday, the deacons are also asking you would get school supplies and bring them here to the altar. There are many young people who are not able to have their parents purchase them school supplies. You can go to Staples or to Giant and get some and notepad books or pencils or erasers or whatever and then bring them to the altar and we're going to ask Reverend Tripline to pray over them next Sunday. Amen. Amen. You heard the announcement regarding September the 7th. The Lord is my help and my strength. I plan to go to Kenya in April and pray that when we go, we'll be able to make a difference. And the difference, even if you can't go, you can support that silent auction in September. Amen. Now, just a few weeks ago, Priscilla and uh, Angela asked us to really dig in and help them as they go out to feed the homeless. This Saturday, we're going out. And I made a commitment to go with them. We need some more men to go, men and women, on this Saturday. We'll probably be leaving here around 3.30. Is that the time around 3.30? Uh, and we want to go. Now, next Saturday, Reverend Tripline, who is doing his summer intern at Enon, will be preaching at 4.45. Now, I told him I can't go, but I'm going to send my better half so at least has one amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> So we want, to, we want to pray for him as he continues in his journey, uh, honoring God and serving God's people. We do have two moments, two minutes. Would you please come? And you have two minutes. Now you have a minute and a half. It's all right to laugh in God's house. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. He's been faithful and we want to lift up Robert. Be careful. We want to lift up Robert Brickhouse. He's not feeling well today and want to keep him in prayer as well. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ken Anderson, and um, I sponsor The Brighter Day. Uh, every Monday, every Monday in the month, we have a discussion group. And the discussion, uh, the discussion will go pretty good. Um, we had one on uh, depression, um, and we had one on loneliness. Uh, this time, uh, this Monday, we're going to have one on codependency. Uh, codependency, a lot of people don't know, but it can disrupt a family and relationships. Codependency, if you don't know anything about it, it would be a good idea to come. It's 7 o'clock, and we don't have enough. Sorry, I don't know if we're going to have refreshments or not, but we more than likely will. But codependency is a very good topic. Ladies and gentlemen, I suggest that you come. Thank you very much. Amen. We have someone else celebrating a very significant time in their life. Uh, I see them all the time. I don't see one without the other, and they have a flower on their car. And I, when I see that flower, I know I got to be on my best behavior. Brother Boss just celebrated his 87th birthday. Won't you stand? 
Amen. 87. You don't see him without his wife. Stand up. Amen. You don't see him without his wife. Amen. I go to Giants, and they're right there. What you doing, Pastor? I'm shopping. And we thank God for his spirit. Amen. Let me also say that uh, I would hope and pray that you would get the Code of Righteous Warrior book by Dr. Alan Wilder. I will say more about that in the message, but September, Reverend Keith Hodges is going to do a book club around that book. And we have books available after this service, and prayerfully you will take advantage of picking up a copy and over the summer reading it. I want to also thank God for Reverend Gail Bourne, who has been very instrumental in making sure that Minister Josie Newman is not forgotten. She served this church as superintendent for a number of years. Her husband was a trustee here, Mr. Ed Newman. He's been called home to glory. Now she's in a nursing home. But she'll be here at the second service, and we want to recognize her as one of God's faithful warriors. And Minister um, Newman has been a blessing to this church, and now a member of Zion, but still a member of the family of God. And I want to thank you so much for making sure that she's not forgotten. And so we'll do that on our second service. This morning, uh, even though I know that folks are on vacation, uh, I remember my pastor would even say, Pastor Alan Frank County, there are those on vacation and there are those who are pretending to be on vacation. <laughs> so uh, we want to honor God today. And I listened to Reverend Tripleman and others this morning, and we're blessed. Uh, when we leave here, we'll have our homes to go to. There are countless people who have no homes as a result of this unbelievable floods and storms that we've seen in our country. We're going to take an offering today to be supportive of those particular families. So I ask that the second offering we would honor God in that manner. I'm also grateful to God for the support of those who are supporting our wild endowment. At this point, we're pretty close to $90,000. And we have been sure that we reached $100,000 that this anonymous donor who's been faithful at this church will give us $31,000, indicating 131 years that God blessed this congregation. I'm also grateful to God for those who worked so diligently throughout the other vacation Bible school uh, with um, classes for our agents and nice meals. And then the barbecue slam yesterday, a lot of work. We are grateful for God for all those individuals. Amen. Amen. Let us honor God now by gifts, ties, and offerings. Ask again that we would stand as we share together our litany. It's time to give. It's tithing and giving time. To whom does the tithe belong?
again that on your way out you'd purchase a copy of the Philadelphia Tribune. The Sunday edition of the Tribune is $2.50. We sell up here at the church for $2 because we believe in core values of Mr. Bob Owen and the Tribune. So I do pray again that you pick up a copy. Next Sunday I have written an article regarding a legend that is Reverend Dr. Albert Franklin Campbell who has written a book You'll be here in September for the opportunity to preach the word and do a book signing at the Observed Family Day. And this Family Day, we're going to give a membership of three months to the Y at no cost. Um, starting tomorrow, I'm going to try after the early morning prayer service. I want to thank you for that, but uh, I'm going to try and make it a commitment. So, all now I'm here around 7 15. Tomorrow morning at 715, I plan to be at the Y walking on the track. I want to keep this one body strong. Amen. So if you see me at the Y, just say hi, Pastor. I'm keep on walking. I'm also grateful for what I Wilson who has blessed so many young people in my community. So many young people. And there's a young lady here who is honored. Uh, I don't remember her name, but she could stand. She's here this morning. She was honored. And has received numerous awards. If you're present, won't you please stand, Larry? Is she here? Christine. Christine. Would you please come this way, young lady? Amen. And just say a word about yourself, some of the things you've accomplished. And you only have two minutes. That's wonderful. This young lady has been faithful, her parents, and we're just grateful to God for her. Amen. Amen. I want you to know not only is Larry Wilson proud of you, your family, and so are we. Let me give you this. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Kwan. He's been very supportive. Are you this young lady? She's been on a track club with me, 10 years old. And she's a very dedicated worker, but she has accomplished so many great things in her life. And many great things will be in, in, in her future. But she won the Pennsylvania State Championships for the past two years. <laughs> Not only that, she. she Compete in the uh, in the high school uh, national championships in North Carolina, and she played first in the triple jump. Yeah. <laughs> Christine is one of the most dedicated women that we have ever had in our track club. She uh, trained hard. She was committed. But other than that, she was a fine young lady, very very nice, well respected by the coaches and the teammates. 
She also has received a full ride scholarship in track at Arizona State. Um, hi. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting this, but uh, thank you for the recognition. And I think Pastor Kwan and Pastor Kwan and Mr. Wilson on the coaches that I see, my dad and everyone. <laughs> We have some wonderful young people in this church. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Come on, Lord, I want you to bless us.
who love us for him. Gracious and glorious God, we thank you for this opportunity, this privilege, to stand behind the sacred desk to proclaim your word. Use me, God, for your glory. May every word out of my mouth give you praise, give you thanks. May I decrease and may you increase. And may the word fall on good ground. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ do we pray. Amen. I would ask that you would stand on your feet and turn to the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the eleventh verse. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. This morning, I want to share with you from the subject, let's get ready to rumble. You may take your seat. I had a wonderful experience <laughs> in our Tabernacle Men's Retreat. So much so, I wanted to share that with you. Because as God gives us favor, we recognize my need to share with others. I have been blessed to do the Men's Retreat at Leon for six years. This is my sixth year, and I was privileged to go with my son Mark as we spent the weekend together. It was an incredible experience. Reverend Leroy Miles preached on Thursday evening. Powerful message. On Friday evening, Pastor Alan Waller preached from the 100th Psalm that we heard this morning as I called to worship and we shared in communion. There were times on Friday that we attended workshops. There were four workshops that we attended. The men had some free time, a basketball, a bowling, a swimming. I did none of them. But I was blessed because Pastor Waller has not ever taken the opportunity to introduce me without acknowledging how I became his pastor. In fact, when I went there on Thursday, he said something to me that kind of startled me at first. He put his arms around me and said, hey, Pop, how you doing? <laughs> Looked in the mirror and said, I guess I am Pop. <laughs> but the mere fact that somehow God has allowed him to see me as his pastor, recognizing that his first pastor was his father, and then Pastor Turner, who was called the Lord also, was his second pastor. They talk about the need to have someone who's wiser and older to cover him. In fact, indicating all of us need somebody to cover us. Yes. Yes. I cannot stop thinking about what a blessing it is because I didn't ask that. And I'm well aware, well aware that there are countless pastors and preachers who have much more training than I do, many more skills than I do, much more education than I have, who would love the recognition of being Pastor Wallace's pastor. But for whatever reason, God has anointed him to call me that. Next year, Enon is going on a leadership retreat. They're going to have about 500 people. And he's asked me to go as his guest along with my wife, 
another privilege that God has given. I try my best to at least go once a month to Enon to sit under this anointed man. And I've gleaned so much from him. And there are men in my life that I am just grateful to God for. He's one, Pastor Albert Franklin Campbell. My pastor is a second person. In fact, Pastor Campbell is the only person that would say to me, Charles Warren Kwan, I love you. I never heard my father say that ever in my life. So every Sunday evening, I call my sons and daughters, and I call Pastor Campbell. If I don't call him by a certain time, he'll call me, where are you? <laughs> that relationship is nothing but the hand of God. And I wanted to share with you this opportunity I had to preach, and the sermon that I was asked to bring was to bring the finalization of the retreat as a whole. So I used, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> because for the last six years, we were talking about mighty warriors. This whole matter of men being warriors for God is it's crucial, crucial and critical. critical. Michael Buffer, the, the ring announcer for Friday Night Fight some years ago, would say with a loud voice, let's get ready to rumble. I want to hear you say that. Let's get ready to rumble. Now, you folks don't say it like you're really ready to fight. So let me hear you say it again like Michael Buffer would say it. Let's Get ready to rumble! With the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what I want to talk about. As we walk around the text, Paul, the humble servant of the Lord, called on the people of God to put on the whole armor of God. He tells them to be strong, for he knows full well that in order to do battle with Satan, one cannot be weak or timid. If we're going to fight Satan, we have to be strong, courageous, not fearful, but know that we're on the Lord's side and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In other words, we can't be scared. If you think you're beaten, you're beaten. It's all about what's in your mind. And when the enemy comes against you, and he will, you have to know who you are and whose you are. And trust God. I need a witness this morning. Now let me also say that we cannot fight the battle in the flesh. For the flesh is weak. Paul says with full assurance, be strong in the Lord. Let me be clear. We do not fight the enemy with the enemy's weapons. We lose every time. Or we might have a short-term victory, but in the end, we will lose. We cannot fight with hate, with envy, with strife. We have to fight with the love of God in our hearts. If you hear nothing else I say, don't allow the enemy to push you to a battle that you're not prepared for. And don't fight on the enemy's terms. Don't cuss. And some of you know how to do it real well. Oh, I feel like we should just I'm coming down the street. When the enemy attacks you, stand still and trust God. Don't allow your old mind to go back to where you used to be. You say something to me that's mean, I'll say it right back. You don't know me that way. And I've seen some of you do it. Remember what the Apostle Paul said when he wrote to the Corinthians, 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but mighty through God to pull down strongholds. The Christian warrior is urged to put on the spiritual armor in which God himself is clothed when he goes forth to overthrow his enemies. Almighty God has given us the power to be victorious over our enemies, but we must be alert and ready for battle. We cannot go into battle unprepared. For far too often we go to, into the battle unprepared. So many of us will fight at the drop of a hat. We become angry and lose our cool. There's some battles we have to walk away from because we're not prepared to fight them. We have to have discernment when to fight and when to walk away. You got to be ready for battle. And there's some things you need to be ready. Number one, you need to be in prayer. Come on, somebody talk to me. You need to be in prayer. You got to discipline yourself. I mentioned that I'm going to go to the Y on Monday. I can't go to the Y and try to walk around 5,000 times. I'm not prepared to do that. It's going to take some discipline for me to get to be able to walk a certain distance. Come on, somebody talk to me. You can't go to the gym and just start doing all these push-ups without some practice and some discipline. Come on, somebody talk to me. You can't go into battle without prayer and discipline and faith. Know your opponent. Every, every win, win is, is not a win. win. And every loss is not a loss. Sometimes, Sometimes you might feel like you lost, but God will give you another time if you're going to prepare. And don't sit there like you never had a battle. Some of you are in a battle right now. Battle with finances. Battle with relationships. Battle with your health. Battle with the enemy. Battle with Satan. We come to church all dressed up. But there's a whole lot of stuff behind the dress. Some of us are dealing with addiction. Some of us are dealing with all kinds of stuff. And how do we handle it? <coughs> Some of us are insecure. <sighs> I need some help this morning. You folks sit here like you don't know all I'm talking about. The King James Version reads in this manner, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But you know what I like? I like the New Living Translation. It says, put on all of God's armor so we'll be able to stand against firm against all strategies of the devil. The word strategy is the word that we kind of overlook. But the devil has a plan for us. He's cunning. He's wise. He's observing. He knows our weakness. All of us are having a kill chill. If he can't get us one way, he'll get us another way. I remember growing up, you could say anything you wanted, but don't talk about my mama. You can say anything you want to say about me, but don't you dare bring her up. And all of us might be strong in one area, but there's some areas in our lives that need to be improved. And we don't talk about this, but all of us have some weakness. We were interviewing someone for a major CEO. And the question was asked, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And the person was able, really, to just roll off a number of strengths. But when it came to weaknesses, because we don't talk about them. But all of us have some weak areas in our lives, and Satan knows exactly where to go and how to do it. He's strategizing now how to get us out of God's will. Never get comfortable, because Satan knows that there's some things in your life that you can't handle. 
Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. You folks, I'm not speaking in tongue yet. I'm speaking the truth. There's some things that you cannot handle. And Satan knows exactly how to do it. Finance. He'll mess with your finance. He'll mess with your relationship, your wife, your husband, your children. The things you think are secure, he'll come after that. In fact, he'll show up in church, in the choir loft. In the pew, right next to you. Turn to somebody and say, I hope you're not sitting next to me. He dresses up. He's in disguise. He lets you think that he loves you. He says flowy words to you and you got an ego, you want to hear him. Tell me that again, you're nice. Some of us can't handle compliments. It goes through our head. So Satan just keeps on, you're wonderful. And then what happens is, you go home and your spouse doesn't tell you that and all of a sudden you... Don't let nobody else take you out of your home. So I think if somebody would tell me that, say, Pastor, you look good. Wait to hear from Tanya. You could have him. <laughs> He's a piece of work. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> I know I'm right there, brother. Don't always look like it appears. <laughs> he doesn't cook. He doesn't clean. Don't okay, clean up behind yourself, you can have it. I'm serious. That's why many marriages are in trouble. Satan knows exactly where to go. Goes for the juggler. Yeah. Paul says we're not fighting flesh, but against evil rulers and authorities of unseen powers. Put on the whole armor of God, all of it. Stand firm in the Lord. Oh, God. Stand your ground. Put on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from God and you'll be fully prepared. In order to deal with the powers of the devil, we need spiritual power. We see racism every day. Say something, do something. We see all kinds of things happening. We need to speak out loud and say, we need to do something. Social justice is what God's called us to do. What did the Lord require us to do justice and love mercy and walk humble with our God? We are in a battle. And we cannot be content and act like it's not happening. We have to be concerned about one another. The devil have us resting on our own accomplishments. We would feel like, well, that's not me, so I don't need to respond. That's how the devil does it. But there are people who need our voice, need our support, need our encouragement, need us. We have to speak out and do what's right. We have to trust God, lean on God, depend on God. The church cannot be a place where everything is just inside. We've got to go outside the walls. The battle is real. Incarceration of individuals who have done a little crime have paid a big price. It's all about money and power. If you have money, you get ahead. It's time for us to stand up and run or fight. Can't be no cowards in the church. You worry about snitches. God's got your back. We've been too quiet, too much at ease in Zion. God's calling us to do something, to be about the Father's business. 
Paul says, in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets first prize. So run your race to win. To win the contest, you must deny yourselves many things that would keep you from doing your best. An athlete goes to all this trouble just to win a blue ribbon or a silver cup. But we do it for heavenly reward that never disappears. So I run straight to the goal with purpose in every step. I fight to win. I'm not just shadow boxing or playing around. I punish my body, training to do what it wants to. Otherwise, I'd be declared unfit in order to stand aside. Lastly, let's get ready to rumble. Let's get ready to fight. I'm ready. Anybody here ready to rumble? I can't hear you. Anybody here ready to rumble? The word fight means faith in God having strength. I'm prepared for battle. I've been through some things, seen some things, and God has brought me a mighty long way. I know who is able to keep me in a battle. Do you know him? Have you been through any battles? Has God kept you? Has God blessed you? I need a witness in the house. Anybody here been through some stuff and you're still standing? This is my, not my first fight. I'm from the hood. I'm from South Philly. I will never deny where I'm from. I got that same walk. I walk, I walk with confidence. Can anything good, good, good come out of the hood? Yes. yes. Oh, hallelujah to the hand. Look at the Healed out, out of destruction. Ah. I've been healed by the power of God. I know who I am and it knows who I am. And I'm ready to fight. Because I've been through so much and I know what God's able to do. I sometimes tell you when I had to fight with insecurity. But God's blessed me. I can tell you when I had to fight, when my father said you'd never be anything and never amount to anything, I had to fight my way out. I had to fight when the professor said, you don't need to go to college. You need to just go on, keep on working in the factory. I had to fight my way through that. I had to fight some other fights when my finances were low and it cut off the gas. I didn't know what I was going to do. Oh, I know you've always paid your bills. You don't know anything about fighting. I've had to fight the flesh at times. I told you once before, you know, uh, I'm not all that you think I am. I, I got a little stuff in me, like you got some stuff in you. Preach. The only thing I'm afraid right now is I act silly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it tastes good. I can understand you. I can understand you. Do you think I'm afraid now? Just let me give you a I had to fight that. Leave that alone. I know what it is to fight, but I also know who is able to keep you. Does anybody know who's able to keep you? Anybody able to know who's able to, is, is God been through your life? Has he blessed you? Have you had some battles he brought you through? Anybody here had some battles that you know only God brought you through? When the door was closed, the Lord opened up that door. When folk told you you couldn't do anything, God gave you a new lease on life. Anybody here able to say it was the Lord who brought me this far? It was the Lord who opened up the doors when the doors were closed. It was the Lord who made a way out of no way. It was the Lord who was my help when all help was lost. It was the Lord who came to my rescue when I didn't know how I was going to make it. It was the Lord on my side through all my life. I give him praise. I give him thanks. I am what I am by his grace. By his mercy, by his love, he's worthy, 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 worthy. I want to close with this. One of the downsides of being an affluent church in this community is that sometimes we forget, we suffer from amnesia and forget where the Lord has brought us from. We don't want folks to know that we struggled at one time. 
But you need to give God thanks for the struggles he brought you through. And your testimony will help somebody else. They won't really get it when you tell them you've got all this stuff going on. But when you can tell them, you know what? I know what you're going through because I've been there. I've even messed up in my life. I made some mistakes. I've done some things I shouldn't have done. But God! But God! But God! But God! But God! That's why I say to you, when I tell you that there's some things that come to my life I don't deserve. Now, some of us have some accomplishments that we earned and we worked for. We got our degrees. We sweated out. We struggled. We made sacrifices. Others made sacrifices. But there's some things that God blesses. We didn't do anything to get it. Anything to get it. Anybody? Any? And you have anything that is yours that you didn't do a thing? Come on, is anybody here who not ashamed there's some things that happened in my life I didn't do anything for? I didn't run a good game to get my wife. The Lord just gave it to me. Somebody else messed up. The Lord said, I'm going to give you another shot. Oh, come on. Give God some praise. 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 And I'm telling you, when you realize that there's some things that you have not even earned or deserved. You can't help but give God praise. When you think you've done all, that your praise is a limited to who you are. But when you realize what God has done, you here for some reason Satan has not bothered you then just let me tell you this you're not bothered me because the more you try to serve the Lord he's going to show up and show out so if Satan not bothering you I'm not going to tell you to keep on living I'm just going to tell you, you you're not a, at all threat to him because he already got you where he wants you so he'll leave you and go to somebody else because you're not trying to serve the Lord. So he'll say, I got you. So I don't need to spend time with you. I'll go to somebody else who's trying to serve the Lord. And you know what I do? I carry him. See, I'm myself. I carry myself. I got my stuff with me. Because if you can't go to battle, I'll just shut up. I got my stuff. Here it is right here. Right here. This, this is it right here. This is it right here. Don't go into battle without it. Stand on the word of God. So when they pull out your stuff, you pull out yours. I got mine. There may be somebody this morning, man, woman, boy, or girl. If you're here, I would invite you to come to Christ right now. We have to fight, we have to fight. Somebody. We have to hold on. The blood stained banner. We, we got, got to, to hold it up until we die. Turn to somebody and say, Can I we walk with you? Are soldiers in the army. We got to fight until we die. We got to fight. We got to hold the Somebody. We are soldiers in the army. We like to fight.
Now let me do this. You may take your seat. Sometimes words take second place to action. So I'm going to close off the serve that 